So this knife is what we call the chef's knife and it does 90% of the jobs in the kitchen. And then this other knife, uh, which is a paring knife, does the other small jobs in the kitchen. If you have a bread knife, that would be great to cut bread. But um, having these three knives, you wouldn't miss other knives. So this is what you use most of the time. Um, let me show you before we start uh, how you could keep your cutting board steady on the counter um, so it doesn't move, especially the ones that are plastic. I have a piece of paper towel here that I'm going to now wet and bring back here so that I can slide it under the cutting board. Um, that will keep the cutting board from moving on the counter, okay? Um, so I'm just going to make it moist and bring it here spread it under the paper, uh, under the cutting board. This is a steady, heavy cutting board, so I don't expect it to move, but then there are those plastic kinds uh, that seem to move a lot when you're cutting with them, even though they are convenient to transfer stuff into the parts. So I got this, now it's steady. Uh, and uh, here's a piece of celery. I want to show you how to cut this piece of celery. Uh, you're gonna hold the knife like this, so first let me show you the proper way of holding the knife. Um, as you can see, my thumb is here where it's like almost on the blade, right where the handle meets the blade. And then my other finger is also right here. And, and these three fingers are wrapped around this uh, handle right where it meets the blade. So you don't want to hold the knife like this. You don't want to hold the knife like this. You can probably cut using holding the knife that way too, but it just won't be efficient, especially if you want to do a lot of cutting. So just learn the techniques uh, properly the first time and then um, your speed will come and you'll find the work is easy and more efficient. So we want you to work smart and not work uh, hard. Um, here's a piece of celery. If you want to make this big uh, piece into a smaller, uh, thinner strip, uh, you could first hold it like this and it's almost like holding it in a tunnel. Slide the knife in the tunnel and then get uh, a cut like that. Okay, now it's going to be stable and steady when you put it flat like this. I want to show you how to hold the food. When you're holding the food, we want you to use what we call a claw grip. So a claw grip looks like this. Uh, this is your claw. You want the thumb and the pinky to be tucked in the back side. You don't want them extending out. And then you want your knuckles to act as a guide, your fingertips tucked in. So this is how you hold the food, okay? So this is what I call a claw grip. This is a pinch grip, okay? And then you, um, if you're cutting um, something small, the knife doesn't even need to leave the board, okay? So you keep the tip of the knife on the board, you hold the knife like this, and then you rock the knife on the cutting board, let the heel of the knife do most of the work, okay? So watch as I do this. Now, it's up to you if you want to uh, cut it thin or you want to cut uh, bigger, thicker slices, okay? So this is how we cut. This is a basic cut. Now, if you want to get the pieces into even smaller sizes, you can then choose to pull the pieces again like this and then cut them into even smaller bits. Now, there comes a time when you're unable to hold it or the pieces have become pretty small now and you won't be able to hold them individually, it won't be efficient to do that, but you still want an even smaller cut, then what you could do is, and you that's actually called a mince, so you want to mince it, you put the palm of your hand on the blade of the knife, and then you just keep the knife steady, uh, the tip of the knife steady, and you just go over the food like this, and this is, what, uh, this is how you can mince it. So your basic slicing we showed you, and your mincing action is what you're looking at right now. Uh, you usually don't need to mince celery so much as much as you may want to mince garlic sometimes at home or a little piece of ginger, um, and you can use mincing there. Uh, let me show you how to chiffonade the basil or chiffonade any leafy thing that you're using. I have a few leaves of spinach here, and you could do this with the basil. I think I, I use it the most uh, for basil. And this is what I call chiffonading the basil. Uh, I'm removing the stems. What you are going to do is then stack the leaves one on top of the other. So let's get this out of the way. And uh, stack the leaves one on top of the other like a deck of cards. And once you do that, it's, it's how much ever you want to use. You can use five leaves, ten leaves. And then you are going to roll them up in a bundle. Okay. 
Then you run your knife like this, hold it in the same grip, and you run it like this, and you, what you get are these long ribbons that are very pretty to serve over a salad or a pasta or a soup. So this is your uh, chiffonade. Happy cutting. Be safe.